Uh, I don't open any discussion. I turn to the next speaker because I see that John is uh, ready to interview. Andre has the floor. Yes, thank you. Uh, in his introductory note, uh, Jean-Claude mentioned about the neg embedded negative risks for the financial system. Number five was uh, cryptocurrencies. So I thought I might make a comment on financial innovation in general and its impact on finance. We're starting with cryptocurrencies. Looking at the numbers, uh, they are not a systemic risk. Uh, the numbers look huge. Actually, it's about roughly 1,000 billion, so 1 trillion euros. That sounds like a huge number. Roughly one half is the Bitcoin, one half is the other cryptocurrencies, Ether and so on. But if you look at that number, it's only half the balance sheet of BNP Paribas. So, well, yes, I checked the number. So it's not a systemic risk, okay? So it is a different kind of risk, of course, because of fraud, uh, the mafia, and all this. And now we have, it's, it's, it's a speculator's money, basically. It's not money, by the way, because it's not a payment system. Uh, actually, it's not really as uh, secret as people think, because if you want to spend it, the only way to do it is to go to a broker and get dollars or euros, right? So then you get into the system. Anyway, but looking at the financial inno innovation, I think there's another one which is very important, which started re really in 2008 with the launching of the uh, s s smartphones, uh, which is payment systems. That's a major change because now uh, electronic payments represent uh, the major part of, of retail payments in every form through credit cards, through your phones, uh, through, through the internet and so on. And clearly, it's been a, an open field for the GAFAMs uh, and, of course, for a number of startups in that area. The reason the GAFAMs entered that field is because, uh, first of all, the regulations for payment systems are not as strict as regulations for banks. As long as you're not a bank, you can operate. Second, uh, they get uh, huge amounts of data. And data, of course, is money for them because of the advertising which goes with it. But the moment they get into banking, then they get an avalanche of regulation <laughs> in many ways. So in a way, that's a barrier to entry uh, to banking which protects the banking system. On the other hand, the innovations are used by the banking system. Going back to cryptocurrencies, as you know, they use the blockchain and there's a number of cases of bank, private banks using blockchains for their own purpose. So that is positive and negative. To conclude on payment systems, I must say that uh, it is indeed a threat for retail banking, but all banks have joined the crowd in terms of offering that system. And also, as you know very well, Jean-Claude, it gives ideas to central banks and the, the, the code is CBEM, Central Bank Electronic Money. So far, it hasn't been you know, put in motion. Of course, bankers are really saying, if you really do it all the way, what do we do as banks? Okay, so it may happen, I think, from what I understand, but it may happen only to cover the problem of interbank or intercountry payments, international payments for small amounts which are indeed an area in which progress is needed. So uh, to, it's a different subject from all the macroeconomics we're discussing, but it's a very important impact. Again, cryptocurrency is not a systemic risk, a moral risk maybe, uh, in, you know, criminal risk, but not systemic. And on the other hand, payment systems, a major revolution for retail banks and not banks, insurance, fund management, uh, the whole financial industry. Thank you very much indeed, André. <coughs> you were uh, concise and, and luminous. I, I have to say that uh, as regards the, uh, crypto, uh, the, the cryptocurrency that would be issued by central banks, uh, the BIS is working, la, la, like you know, very, very actively on that. I take it that they consider that a major constraint is not to destabilize the banking system. That's clear. 
So to try to have this electronic uh, uh, crypto uh, money uh, exactly as the equivalent of the notes, which of course calls for also for certain limitation, but it is the start will probably be in this uh, domain, and uh, they are they are very close to to start the thing. And I mean, technically, uh, of course, uh, uh, it has been totally explored. Uh, the blockchain that you mentioned is. Uh, very well in order, and you have several concepts, enfin, you know that better than, than anybody, but there are many, many uh, concepts that uh, can be utilized. You, you were a little bit uh, benign on the so-called uh, speculative instruments. It seems to me that we really have a problem uh, of, uh, of uh, fraud, of, uh, uh, I would say, illegal behavior, uh, uh, criminal activity, uh, financing of terrorism, and so forth, which, which remains underlying. And I hope very much that the authorities will regain control because there has been a period of benign neglect which uh, was uh, over exaggerated. Anyway, okay, thank you very, very much indeed, Andre. I